Where will Julio Jones be traded in your opinion, Blake? Where should he be traded? Should the Falcons trade him? Let's answer all three of these questions. Go ahead. Yeah, so we should start with the should the should even the Falcons trade Julio Jones? And um, I know this was talked about a lot right after the season ended when, you know, they had another year finishing with a under 500 record since 20, um, 2017 when they made it far um, or sorry, 2016 when they played the Patriots. And since then, they've just kind of been slowly toppling down and this was an off season where a lot of people are okay. They'll maybe trade Matt Ryan, maybe trade Julio. And then they went out and they restructured Matt Ryan, committing him, committing to him for the future. And, and that makes you think, okay, it looks like they're going to give it a go one, uh, one or two more years, like with this roster, try to build up the defense. And then all of a sudden Julio Jones wants out and they're thinking of trading him. And it's, it's for me, it's like, okay, why would you commit to your quarterback if you're going to get rid of your best offensive weapon? I know they drafted Pitts. I know Ridley's good, but still, it's not like they really have a running back and their receiving options besides Julio aren't that great um, out of this outside of the two guys I mentioned. So that's where, to me, it's a little confusing on why they would actually trade him. But yeah, do you think the same way as I do or what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so in regards to should they actually trade him, I'm 100% with you. Like, once they didn't draft a quarterback, I thought this talk would die down because I thought, like, Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, and Julio Jones, who only played nine games, but when he played, he was still a top two or three receiver in the NFL. Like, with Matt Ryan and in Arthur Smith's offense, like, the Falcons could have the best offense in the NFL next year. Like, oh, my God. Like, absolutely keep him. But this talk continues, so I don't know why. Like, sure, like, Kyle Pitts is incredible. Calvin Ridley is a really, really underrated player. But like you talked about, the run game, like, they don't have a back that they're going to lean on right now in the run game. And they didn't really particularly address that in the draft either. And that's where I look at it and you go, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, that is loaded. And that's why I don't think they should trade him. But we're here. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of rumors around this. So, obviously, we got to talk about it. So, I got to ask you the next question then. Now that we think that he's going to be traded, even though we don't think the Falcons should, where do you think that place is? Yeah, so there's been a lot of teams, like, rumored to be in on him or in the talks. 49ers, Patriots, Colts, Ravens. I'm sure there's a bunch more that I didn't mention that are bigger markets that are just there. I know the Cowboys are one of the teams that are on. You can bet on the Cowboys to get them. And I find that absolutely hilarious, just the fact that they need a fourth receiver who's um, above average. So that's funny. But, yeah, I think the team that stands out to me the most is the team with probably the worst receiving core in the league, even after free agency. They only got a couple guys, one being Nelson Aguilar, who he did look good on the Raiders last year, but still I don't trust him as my number one. And then Kendrick Bourne, former 49er, who didn't really do as good as people thought would, but – I would say the Patriots are the team that, yes, they have two tight ends. They have Mac Jones, but having an elite, and I still think Julio's elite. I mean, yes, he did miss games, but in the nine games, he had, I think, like damn near 800 yards, and his his average yards per game last year was 85. If you compare that with the, the rest of the NFL's total, that's still top five all time, which is just dumbfounding, and people say he sucks, so... I don't know where that's all coming from. Yeah, the injuries are concerning, but a team like the Patriots who do did sign a lot of guys, but they still have cap space. Um, this year, they still have uh, a little over $15 million, and then in 2022, they'll have like $24 million, and that's per over the cap. So they have the cap space to do it. They have picks. They haven't shelled out a bunch of future firsts or anything like that. So that, from a financial standpoint, makes sense to me. And then I did want to break down some of the numbers that if he is traded June 1st for the Falcons and uh, for the team that gets him. So for the Falcons, they would have um, 7.75 million dead cap the next three years. And then the team that gets him next year, so in 2021 would pay him 15 million. And then 2022 and three would pay him um, 11.5 million. So that's very reasonable for how good... Julio is. So I think the Patriots 
are the team that just need to go and get him. And having an elite pass catcher along with two above average tight ends, they already have a really good line. They already have a really good run game, which we've hit on a few times. And then they have someone who's who could, could step in and be just a precision thrower in Mac Jones, or if not, Cam Newton. Um, so that, for me, is the team that I look at and I say they would benefit the most, and financially it does make sense. But who do you think? Yeah, I think you outlined all the points, and it's weird because we don't usually agree this much, especially this early, but I'm 100% with you. I think the Patriots are the team that makes the most sense because when they have a genuine need for a number one receiver, like you talked about Aguilar and Bourne. It's not that Aguilar and Bourne are bad. It's that you look at Aguilar and Bourne very differently if you have Julio Jones with them. Mm -hmm. You then look at Julio Jones, Aguilar, and Bourne, and you go, wow, the Patriots have a pretty solid receiving core. They have three kind of reliable guys, especially I would say of those guys, I would say I actually believe more in Bourne than I do in Aguilar. Sounds kind of weird to say because Niners fans think Bourne is kind of unreliable because he occasionally has timely drops, but he plays every game and he's kind of consistent with his production. Aguilar is a little bit more like there's one season like the Eagles Super Bowl season where you go, wow, Nelson Aguilar is not a bust. He's really turned around. He's a great weapon. And then a year later, you got uh, a guy in Philadelphia on a video saying he catches, I think, children better than Nelson Aguilar catches football. So he's inconsistent, but if you add Julio Jones to those three, like that's incredible. Then you have Hunter Henry, John Smith, incredible offensive line. I still think Cam Newton is not a bad quarterback. I don't know why he has this reputation. I think if he gets the opportunity to start all 16 games this year, he will win the comeback player of the year. That's just a prediction I'm going to make right now, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I also really liked Mac Jones before the draft. I liked him a lot at 15 to New England. Mm -hmm. I think when we ranked landing spots for quarterbacks, we both said that Mac Jones had the second best landing spot. And yeah. I think Julio is an incredible fit for their offense. Like the most underrated thing about Julio Jones to me, and it doesn't get talked about enough, is his route running for a guy of his size and his speed. Yeah. His ability to cut in and out, his ability to go be smooth in and out of breaks, his ability to have an explosive first step and beat press coverage and all of that doesn't get talked about enough. So he can, he's actually more than capable of running a lot of the Julian Edelman routes that require sudden uh, change of direction. He has that absolute ability. And then he would add something the Patriots haven't had since Randy Moss, the ability to just test defenses vertically and just beat defensive backs with raw speed. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible, incredible football player. And I think New England, whatever they got to do to make it happen, they should. Because honestly, I I, I really think New England's going to be a playoff team next year. I look at their defense. I think their defense is going to be really, really good, especially when you bring back Dante Hightower. Mm -hmm. um, I look at their offensive line. I think we've gone talked about it before. They have a really good offensive line and a very good run game. Both those things will be there next year. And you add Julio Jones, I think, regardless of whether it's Mac Jones regardless of whether it's Cam Newton, with their coaching, their defense, their ability to run the football, they will be very successful. So I think they should get try and get Julio Jones. I mean, also, wouldn't it just be the Patriots to get buy, buy great value on a yeah, exactly. Hall of Famer and have him finish out his career with three or four more great seasons with them? It just feels like they do that every time. They've done it with so many different guys and mm – -hmm. It would just feel apropos for them to do it with Julio Jones too. And with Cam, like people like like players in the NFL love Cam. And I know Julio would love to play with Cam. So even if Cam's not the starter, and if he is, I, I think he probably will start the season as a starter. Like Julio would want to be with Cam. So that's also another like sort of incentive for him to actually go there. So um yeah, that would – just Julio on the Patriots would be annoying. I mean, they already had Randy Moss. They already had Gronk. They've had a ton of other good receivers. Um, and there's definitely a hole there compared to most other teams. So I think the Patriots – I think both of us can agree the Patriots would be the best landing spot for him, just all things considered. But uh, other teams too, like maybe the Colts would be a really good landing spot. Or you could even say the Ravens. I don't know if their cap space would allow for that. I don't think it will when they have to pay Lamar, but um, that would be so, scary. So the Colts obviously would make sense. But I think given that they just gave money to T.Y. Hilton, I mean, I still think they believe in Paris Campbell a lot. I mean, I have nothing to say hey, about man. this other than the fact that they spent a second-round pick on him and he was good in college. 
And yeah. Pittman and Pittman really showed something at the end of last he year. Did. So I think I think the Colts should be optimistic about their trio where it's like if I have to give up a second round and a third round pick for Julio Jones, it might not be what I want to do at this moment, even though Julio Jones is still a top five receiver and he's a future Hall of First Ballot Hall of Famer. For the Patriots, it's like you if you get Julio Jones, you go from this playoff contender to this Super Bowl contender. And I do want to mention something with Cam Newton. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff about Cam Newton's inaccuracy. There are, have been a few ugly throws over the years, especially last year, that have been put on Twitter and people have discussed them. Here's a stat, though, with Cam Newton that people don't talk about enough, right? We talked about in 2019, there was a lot of talk about Tom Brady's receivers, right? How bad they were. Cam Newton mm-hmm. played with worse receivers last year. He played with the same receivers as Brady, but with a more banged up Edelman with no offseason and playing in a brand new system. Do you know that he had a better, if you remove spikes and throwaways, he had a higher on-target pass percentage than mm-hmm. Tom Brady in 19? This is Cam Newton in 20. Where, what is that like an on-target stat? Like just It's like basically just on, on ta- it's, it's, it's an on-target ta- charting of your throws. Tom Brady in 19 was 73.9% on target. Mm-hmm. Cam Newton was 74.6. Cam Newton had a 65-point yeah. completion percentage. Tom Brady had a 60.8. Cam Newton had a higher mm. yards per attempt than Tom Brady. Cam Newton had a higher yards per completion, and he was also a higher percentage under pressure, although Brady's pressure stats are always a little bit uh, misleading because with any offensive ball line, out Brady, right, he gets the ball out so quickly. So the point is that, like, it's not to say that Cam Newton is going to be Tom Brady next year. Or he's going to go win a Super Bowl or anything. It's just I don't think people are realizing how poor that supporting cast was around him in New England. Yeah, and the fact that he's still a solid player. And now Mac Jones, they might start Mac Jones. They might go that route and all of that. But that doesn't mean mm-hmm. Cam Newton isn't solid. No, I agree with you. I think that's a that's a great point.